we're halfway down the mountain. The reservoir is closer to the top and it was going to come down and then, um, but we couldn't get out of our street because trees were down. We had 17 minutes between the alert that said evacuate, mandatory evacuation, evacuate now, and then shelter in place, see Caius ground. We had 17 minutes to leave and we couldn't and there was nowhere to go, so we had to stay. All right, we gotta think about getting out of here. Oh, you won't be just walking around you. Walk around your sick side. I do won't be just walk around me. Walk around me until I die. All right, this, what is probably going to end up being a really long video, uh, is going to start off just a little differently because there are, are people, there are, there are Americans right now who are trapped in these flood-ridden areas of western North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, that thousands of people are missing. We don't even know. <laughs> we won't know for a while like what's really going on, how many people are alive or dead. It's the stories that are coming out right now are insane and I can't even wrap my mind around it. I'm actually really pissed off. But before I get into all of that, before we get into all of that, people in these areas right now are are without power, they're without clean water, they don't they don't have food, gas, medicine, supplies, things like diapers. They're 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 stranded and they have nothing. And so I want to start off with just a couple of resources that might help people because there's not a lot of information in central locations that people can access easily. So I try to find some stuff like that. I want to put it up front for the people who who really need it. So the first thing that I found that I thought seemed very useful was up at Citizens Times. They've posted a an interactive citizens emergency map, which has dots all over it. And if you switch to data view, it tells you things like where you can go to get water, where you can go to get food, emergency shelters that are open, places where you can charge a cell phone or get Wi-Fi, places where you can get a free meal, places where you can take a shower. There's lists here, has addresses, um, information about when that's happening. And so that's like 17 pages of stuff that people have provided here for people who are needing these resources. And I will put that link first. I'm going to make a list of links. I'm going to stick it in a pinned comment below. It'll be the top pinned comment. This is going to be the first link on it. Anybody you know that's in that area that's that needs help, you could send them this link because it's just so much information of places where they can, you know, take a shower or charge their phone or get something to eat or get water, which everyone is desperate for right now, or a meal. So um, I'm going to put that link first. The second thing that I think everyone needs to see, and it, it's pretty astounding, uh, there's a Facebook group, and I wouldn't normally say, hey, go join Facebook. Uh, we were kicked off of Facebook years ago, and I, I don't recommend Facebook, and I never usually would. But I am now for this reason only. There is a missing persons group that has been set up for Eastern Tennessee and Western North Carolina due to the flood. It was set up four days ago, and it already has 66,000 members there have been over 200 posts on here just today of people who are missing. It's a place where you can go and post a picture of your loved one or a name and information if you're trying to find somebody that you haven't heard from that lives in these areas that have been affected by this storm. There have been 2,100 posts just in the last four days on this group of people who are missing. It's, it's insane. Thousands of people are missing right now that no one has heard from. They don't know if they're trapped. They don't know if they're hurt. They don't know what's going on. So that's one place you can go and join and, and post a picture. Another place is this Google document that's been set up, the Hurricane Helene People Finder. It's basically just a Google spreadsheet, but they have a form here that you can fill out. You can put the name of the person, 
you know, where their last known location was of these states and any additional details like their address or their license plate or any information you have about this person to try and find them. And then you can put your information so they can contact you. And they're basically just keeping up this color coded spreadsheet of people who are missing and that's in red and people who are found. Although there is one on this list that's says deceased in yellow. Um, they're updating this all the time, but there are over 2,500 names on this list. So again, thousands of people are missing. So if you're missing somebody and you go to this Facebook page and join it and put that person and you go to this Google spreadsheet and put their name, you've now put that out there in the two places that I found that have the most people concentrated together trying to help each other locate their missing friends and family members in this in this situation. Well, I did like With a name near my side, just keep your hands up on the throttle and your eyes up on the lead. No, I hope not. Oh, we're going to go up in the attic and we have to, guys. We were not warned. Oh! Oh, dear! Get him! Oh, Just to give you an understanding of uh, the devastation we're dealing with here, Chimney Rock's gone. Flying Bridge's gone. And the road's gone. Everything on the farm drowned. <laughs> Couldn't get everything out. <laughs> we managed to save one horse. Well, leaving comments of, oh, why didn't they evacuate? Da, 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 da. I don't think you comprehend how quickly this happened. And these areas have never flooded like this before. I, I don't oh think I've ever gosh, seen, not I've not never, that. never <laughs> seen downtown Boone, uh, Boone flood like this. Look at that. We have one way in and one way out. How are we supposed to flee if and when that bridge goes? It took our bridge. It took our driveway. The amount of bridges that are out, the amount of landlocked, um, stranded people is unbelievable. Guys with me that have done it 30 years and they've never seen anything like this. It's been an incredibly apocalyptic weekend for all of us here. The news is not even coming close to catching the true devastation. Um, there are bodies that are floating down the river, babies. They literally watched multiple neighbors die. One was hit by a tree, others were washed away. Literally the house was floating away with people in it. Um, they, they are in shock, they are traumatized. It's not enough, what, what is being done is not enough. There's still plenty of people completely unaccounted for. Keep these, these locals in your, in your prayers.
destruction and devastation caused by this hurricane up in the mountainous areas of eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina is, it's beyond unprecedented. They're they're actually saying this is a 1,000-year weather event, but I think they're just slapping the number 1,000 on there because they, they want to put a really big number because they've never seen anything like this before. We're looking at a 1,000-year th- rain event here. These are areas where the roads are very narrow in places. Mass exodus probably wouldn't even have been possible if they could have done it in time, and they didn't have a lot of time in a lot of areas. This, if you pull up on this trying to get out, you're not going this way. And there might not be another road on the other side to get you somewhere because you're going to get swept down a mountain. I don't think you can tell when people are criticizing that they don't really understand the geography of this region. You've got spotty reception service. So if they're sending out emergency alerts, people aren't probably getting them. And I've even seen meteorologists being quoted as saying, The messaging could have been stronger to warn people to get out, but we have to cut everyone some slack because what happened doesn't even make any sense. Okay, that's that's the level we're talking about. And the problem with leaving that some people don't seem to realize at all is that the government might prevent you from coming back. But we'll get to that momentarily. This this Hurricane Helene came up into here and dumped 40 trillion gallons of water in a very short amount of time, into areas that don't see water like that. And the water just had nowhere to go. And there are still mudslides happening. There's still flooding that has not receded yet. It's just too much water. It has to go somewhere. So you've got people, like I said, they're describing this as not just unprecedented, but apocalyptic. There are, depending on where you look, They're reporting CBS News yesterday reported 131 deaths. Today, the New York Times is saying 183 in six states. Good Morning America said the death toll has now reached 200. They're not going to know for a long time how many people have perished in this. But thousands of people are missing. So it rained for several days before this area was hit, so it was already rained on and then this thing came through and just dumped insane amounts of water. In some places, 18 inches of water got dumped in 12 hours. The highest number I saw for one little town was 31.33 inches of rain in Busick. So 31 inches of rain is unimaginable. I mean, this is a kind of place where people plan for self-sufficiency. They have had floods before, but not anything, anything like this in known, recorded modern American history. And it's been um, compared to the 1916 flood that happened in the area, but that comparison is very, that that flood pales in comparison to this, actually. Um, And it was pretty serious, too. I mean, the stories at the time coming out about that flood are very harrowing stories. You have just terrifying, horrible things like babies being pulled out of people's arms and stuff. But that flood was 22 inches of rain. And total for the entire area was 80 deaths. So we have more than doubled that number already. And again, people are still trapped up in here. Like there's there's no way to know how many people are missing. They don't even have a good number right now. I can not even tell you how many families, even here outside of Charlotte, that are looking for their loved ones up in that area. No one knows anything. If you go to certain platforms, there is picture after picture after picture of people that are missing and lost and people looking for their family members. And it is not okay. There's no coordinated central location where that information is going. That's the thing. It's all done by citizens. It's definitely not happening through our government. So anyway, this is not the 1916 flood. This is something else entirely that has happened here. I grew up here. I lived here, I mean, 30 years, basically. So on and off, and I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen devastation like this. It's been flooded before, but this is completely insane. 
It started at Wednesday, pouring down rain. It rained Wednesday, Thursday, and she came Friday. I mean, everything she could move, she moved. Hey, hey. Oh, my oh my God. My car is gone. I'm okay. It's okay. The, the everything's okay. gone. It isn't just bridges that are washed out or roads that are washed away. Whole towns are, are gone. We've got upwards of almost a million people still without power as of today, just in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia alone. And the stories that are coming out of people being trapped in areas where there's no running water, they can't obviously flush toilets. You have elderly and disabled people who can't get around very easily. There are stories of children being found just abandoned in the woods, not abandoned, but their parents are nowhere to be found. Something must have happened to their parents because there's just children just in the woods. And that's before you get into the much darker stuff that the media isn't talking about. How they're saying just a couple hundred people on the news and social media. He looked at me and just his face kind of, head kind of drooped and he started choking up. I put my hand on his back and said, buddy, we're doing all we can do. He said, I've talked to people and they're pulling people out of houses by the hour. Just that they couldn't get out. The water took them in, trapped them in, then the silt filled in. They're there. You go down through there and there's just houses with big X's on them or check marks on them. I don't know what the X's mean. I don't want to know what the X's mean, but I'm hoping the check mark means that they're good, that they're, that they're, they're, there's nobody in there. That, I mean, it's, it's fucking horrible. And so now we're going to get to a part of the video that is probably going to piss a lot of you off. It really pisses me off. I, I, I find what I'm about to say to you very unreal because it, in the first sense anyway, what I'm about to tell you doesn't make any sense. These people doing these rescue missions and saying, you know, don't fly drones around the area. Don't... Um, bring in donations that aren't approved. A lot of people are getting turned away for their donations. And it's something is afoot here. But this is the kind of stuff that's going on. And I'm seeing it all over the place. A formal press conference or something from either President Biden or Kamala Harris. I mean, how do you not say anything for four days? They've been stranded for four days, and this is the first we've heard from them at all. FEMA is not on the ground there. Do you have any faith in the federal response here? No. So first of all, you had a woman talking about how TEMA, the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, was telling people not to send donations, not to volunteer to come in to help people. Notification from TEMA. I'm guessing that's... FEMA for Tennessee. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's supposed to be the disaster relief people, but they were like, do not donate your time. We don't want your, we don't want you to donate time unless we ask for you. And we don't want you to donate stuff to other people. You need to just donate money and stuff to us and get your instructions from us and listen to us. What? And was telling people to just give cash donations, which a lot of people are saying if you know what that's about, they put it into a fund. It doesn't necessarily go where you think it's supposed to. So donate to our local churches because they will make sure that the people that, that are need it will get it. And people were saying this woman was making it up and it didn't sound true. But then I found the post from Tima. They did say that. It's right there. I was floored yesterday about how my community, which is little over an hour away from the affected areas, showed up at donation sites with water and diapers and formula and some uh, liquid IV. I mean, y'all brought all kind of things, bleach, vinegar, 
You are ready to help, and we're going to take more donations today, and we're so grateful for everything because I'm going to get it into the hands of actual volunteers. And I was asking people, like, why are you bringing it to me? Some of y'all don't even know me. And they said, well, we don't trust the relief organizations anymore. Y'all, we have lost our organizations to grifters. We have lost our organizations to liars. We pulled up to two different locations. We asked some sheriffs. We asked uh, some other fire departments. They're all leading us to the command post, which is FEMA. They're not going to allow us to do anything. The, pe the, the people are trying to help the people and they're being turned away. There are even stories coming out that people are being threatened with arrest. There was a civilian helicopter pilot who was going in on his own accord and pulling people out because people were writing to him to please come help them because he had posted on social media. And he claimed that he was threatened with arrest. Multiple phone calls I've received like this, voicemails, text messages, and you could hear people desperate for help. Sidham spotted an older couple waiting for help, then landed in what's left of their driveway. I originally left my son, co-pilot, on the side of the mountain. It was, it, it was kind of unstable, so I didn't want to put more weight in the helicopter to lift back off. So I left my son with the other victim and, and I was just going to take one person down at the time. Three minutes away, Sidham spotted a group of rescuers just down the river. He landed and found someone in charge. Told him my, uh, my background experience, law enforcement, uh, firefighting, uh, pilot. He immediately started uh, helping with coordination. He, he gave me radio frequencies to coordinate with them on, um, set up a landing area for me to come back with the uh, other victim. And in the uh, middle of the whole conversation and, and then blocking the road off, I was greeted by the, uh, at that time I didn't know, but Lake Lure fire chief or assistant chief maybe, and he shut down the whole operation. So at, at that point there was, I felt like the conversation wasn't going any further. And again, he asked me to leave and, and, and I said, hey, I have no problem getting out of your area. If that's what you want us to do, we'll, we'll leave, no issue. At that point I asked him, you know, what was the reason I had to leave them there? And, and he said, again, you're interfering with my operation. I, I just need you to get out of the area. I said, sir, I'm, I, I don't know where you were trained at, but I know how my training is and I'm not gonna leave personnel behind. I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. He said, if you turn around and go back up the mountain, you're gonna be arrested. I said, well, sir, I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. I, I don't know what to tell you. And he said, I'm, I'm letting you know. And at that point, he waved for two law enforcement officers to come over and told me that again, if I go back up the mountain, I would be arrested. I ha had a conversation with the female victim before I left, apologizing and explaining. She, she was standing there, she heard the whole conversation. And um, they were both very, very surprised, very upset. The husband, as I was leaving off of the side of the mountain, at that point, separated from his wife, he was, he was upset. People who are going back into these properties that to try to salvage whatever's left on their own property to get their own stuff are being threatened with arrest. It gave me instructions to come talk to you guys that you guys have already gotten ample amount of time. That, I don't know what she told you. I'm giving you guys a warning. That's it. Just please back up for me. That's literally it. Do you see us Look, trying to get I, our no, stuff? I got you. I don't know what you guys been doing. Again, this is... This is I did. Yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. Again, I don't know what you guys been doing. I'm just giving you guys a warning that we're trying to get people So if I had to come back out over here, like, I don't know, like, you get, the jail is processing, all right? That's it. I'm not, I'm, that's the last so report. So let me, so you're going to take us here, to come jail. Here, come here. Look, I'm, I'm not taking you to jail. You're going to take, you you're threatening to take me to jail come here, come here. for come here, come trying come to get our stuff here, off here. our property. All right, well, as long as he's living in the room, go ahead and go out to the park. And if we need to get another officer out here once we get to the next trip, then we'll deal with it then. You heard? Thank you. You heard? Yeah, I heard. heard. So you can be upset all you want. I'm giving you guys a warning. I get it. You guys are I'm giving you guys a warning that if they have to come back out here, they probably have to escalate from there. I guess right. they got to escalate it then. Okay. Because we're trying to get our shit. We got Governor DeSantis of Florida, whose state got hit, sending extra stuff from Florida. Florida, we, we have it handled. We got approved for the individual assistance, things we've wanted. Uh, we have we have what we need. Uh, I think most of the effort should be in Western North Carolina right now. And people are saying the governor of Florida is doing more for them in Tennessee than their own governor is. 
And you also have Rep Mills out of Florida. We've got five different locations that we're looking at today. One location has five elderly. A couple of others have uh, an eight-year-old and, and, and a mother. It's, he's been flying stuff in. He was on TV talking about where's FEMA. Everybody's been asking where's FEMA, where's the aid, why aren't they here, why aren't they helping? Uh, no, actually, the American people are the ones who are leading the efforts. Um, and so it, it, you, you can see now that there is a tremendous amount of people that's just stepped up. I've heard from others who said that they haven't heard or seen FEMA. And there are allegations that people are being stopped from actually being able to save people and that it doesn't make any sense. When I tell y'all I'm super frustrated at the moment is not a lie. For the past 48 hours, I had planned to go to East Tennessee, you know, Irwin, Newport and all that tomorrow. I, I just, and then I get a phone call and an email where we're being told to stand down. I've had emails where I've had a woman named Laura ask for help. Her brother got swept away. They have a video of him being swept away. And she's just asking for help to get him. And yet we're being told to stand down. Heard from these two people about how he went to take generators and supplies there and he was turned down. The water, food, stuff like that turned down. Why? You have people that really need things. And I get it. It's such a disarray. I understand this was all so fast. But at the end of the day, man, putting a halt to everything while there's people's lives at stake that are sitting out there somewhere that don't have anything, that may be trapped, may be hurt, and you're asking people to stand down that have the capabilities to help somebody, it doesn't make sense to me. There's even a soldier that's putting out videos and it's almost like what she's saying is in a very obviously coded language that anyone can get if you just listen to what she's actually saying. People are trying to figure out why we can't get there. The only way there is through air. Roads are destroyed. There's landslides, mudslides everywhere. Safest way and the only way we can get there is by flight. Not that many helicopters. Like I think right now we have like 10, but you got to think how many people are missing. And there's certain things I cannot, I can and cannot say just because... But take that in account. There's a lot of people missing, and it's day, I think, four or five. I have sleep that bridge. I can't f think. But it's been a couple of days. People were without food and without water. I think you can only go two days without water, and that is if you are healthy. Not if you're a child. Not if you're an old lady or old person. Keep that in account. Where she says, I'm as frustrated as you are, but we can only do what we've been ordered to do. They're not going to let us go on foot. They're not going to. I, th I don't know why. They're just... I Listen, I'm literally learning and I'm telling y'all or trying to tell y'all because I can't even tell y'all everything. People are asking, why don't we use animals or four wheelers and stuff like that? They have to approve a whatever that is. They, they have to approve it before we're able to do it. Does that make any sense? If they don't approve it, we cannot do it. Then again, I know I sound aggressive, but I am frustrated with y'all if that makes any sense. I'm trying to level with you. We're only doing what we're allowed to do and what we're told to do. We cannot do anything other than that. Or the consequences will vary. I understand that North Carolina and everywhere is upset with us. I get it. There's there's nothing I can do. There's literally nothing I can do. And there's a lot of people asking where the military helicopters are. Where's all the response? That's North Carolina over there. I'm in Tennessee. The government really wanted to help. Dude, there would be helicopters and, and you know, military just everywhere. There's none. There's none. What is going on? The only thing I need from this video is helicopters. If I have helicopters, I can save lives. Yesterday when I was at the Asheville airport refueling, which by the way, the civilian is paying all this out of his own pocket. He's not even looking for a reimbursement. I think we did four refuelings yesterday. And that was like just in half a day's work. We're in Asheville and I saw two Air Force helicopter 60s. And I knew there were PJs just looking at them. And I went up to him I'm like, hey guys, like, what are y'all doing? And like, this is what you need to be doing. This, 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 this is how I'm finding people. And they're like, we can't go. We're waiting on Title 10 orders. And I'm like, what? They just, they can't get any authority. There's military helicopters all over here sitting on the ground and they can't do nothing. Even my JSOC boys in Fayetteville, they can't get orders to come out here. It is just the most disgusting thing. And they're killing these people. And I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know what kind of conspiracy. I've heard so many things, whatever you want to come up with, but they are literally allowing these people to die in the mountains right now because we can't get helicopters. And it wasn't until October 2nd, October 2nd, that Biden finally approved a thousand soldiers, I think, 
I mean, keep in mind, this area that's affected is the size of Massachusetts. And he just now, days after the fact, just now approved a thousand soldiers. When the first uh, emergency declarations came down, there was only 11 counties in that. Uh, a lot of people were outraged, including me, because there was such devastation in, in, you know, up to 90 counties. Uh, so we call the White House. But basically all of the relief efforts that have been going on uh, have been by civilians, civilian airplanes, civilian helicopters, civilian rescue vehicles, civilian tractors and dozers and any kind of rescue and relief has all been done by civilians. On Saturday, I was able to get into Asheville. I have a two wheel drive vehicle. I do not possess helicopters or giant military bulldozers or bridge layers, just a two wheel drive vehicle. And I got into Asheville. It took me six hours. I had to care because I was going in to help people. I'm not quite sure how a government that has the biggest military on the planet can't figure it out. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that same government that has all the information gathering techniques that it has and satellites uh, is telling people there's still no way to get into the area. They're not going to let us go on foot. They're not going to. And I, this is extra pathetic. What I'm about to say is extra, extra pathetic. But, and I never thought I'd be saying this ever, like in the history of, of time. But Hurricane Katrina, I mean, it has gone down in history as one of the worst responses. There were a lot of atrocities that happened in the responses. There were a lot of things that were being done that were absolutely not okay. But one of the things that was done is they were already calling out Coast Guard and positioning people before that hurricane ever even got to the coast. They already had military in position. Within days, they had deployed tens of thousands of guard and soldiers into that area. There were 30,000 National Guard troops deployed into that area for relief by September 2nd. Ironically, the North Carolina National Guard was sent down there, along with 3,500 soldiers out of the 82nd Airborne Division of Fort Bragg in North Carolina. They went down to New Orleans along with 30 helicopters. There's military helicopters all over here sitting on the ground and they can't do nothing. Which were prepared to deploy on short notice. They had 24,000 troops on the ground in Louisiana and Mississippi. I actually did a little more digging and it's actually even more troops than that article mentioned because they, they sent people out from the army, the Marines, they sent out, they, they quoted a spokeswoman for the 82nd Airborne who said that at least 5,000 from her division would be sent. So it's even more. In fact, Lieutenant General Stephen Blum, chief of the National Guard Bureau, was quoted as saying they would send 10,000 more previously unplanned National Guard, bringing the total up to 40,000. So they sent 40,000 National Guard and many more Army units, Marine units. They, the point I'm trying to make is they sent so many military to assist after Katrina to those areas, newspapers like the Miami Herald were running headlines, storm deployments prompt fears of strained forces, as if they were sending so many people because there was a war in the Middle East going on at the time of this. So that's how many, right? That's how many were sent. Now, why don't you compare that response to the response of 6,500 National Guard members and 1,000 active duty troops. Why don't you compare that to the fact that this storm hit that area Friday, September 27th, it hit that area. On Sunday, September 29th, North Carolina Governor Ray Cooper was quoted at a press conference as saying, More than 500 North Carolina National Guard members are now working alongside local emergency responders conducting search and rescue missions, delivering needed supplies, and working to restore infrastructure. More than 500? The North Carolina National Guard has increased to over 500 soldiers and airmen and over 200 vehicles. Meanwhile, right next door in Tennessee, which was also greatly impacted, they just sent more than 700 National Guard to the Middle East. Their, their own are drowning and you deployed 
troops to Kuwait? Like, what is going on? See the problem here? This is a a horrifying disaster. It's now being called the second worst hurricane to hit since Katrina. And they didn't just send them to the Middle East. They did it after the storm hit. They deployed on Saturday. This storm hit on Friday. This is shameful. This is absolutely shameful. They're reporting now nearly a thousand active duty troops. Nearly a thousand? I thought it was a thousand are joining 6,500 National Guard members from 15 states. 6,500. So you've got maybe 7,500. There were 25,000 Guard and active duty already on standby before Katrina ever hit land. That was what was being reported at the time. And that's Hurricane Katrina, which, again, has gone down in history as one of the most botched, worst responses to a natural disaster that ever occurred. But they did that much. They haven't done hard. Like, what are they doing with this? And if you're thinking it's because New Orleans had more people at the time, there was under a million people in New Orleans in 2005 population. Western North Carolina, by contrast, the 23 most commonly associated counties in the 2020 census had well over a million people. So there's a lot of people just in Western North Carolina alone. And you have to remember, Eastern Tennessee also very much affected. South Carolina also affected. Georgia, Florida, all these other places have also been affected. But this particular area where these people are still trapped and everything, there's a huge amount of people living in those areas. It's just they're spread out in this mountainous area, but there's a lot of people there. So this is 11% of North Carolina's total population is living in that area. And Biden just now, October 2nd, is saying he will approve a thousand troops. So right after their family members get put through this and they join the National Guard, probably, I don't know, I'm just guessing, to protect, to step up and be able to protect their family and neighbors and friends and communities and state if something like this were to happen. Now they're being sent on the other side of the world, I guess, to protect foreign countries, not obviously not their own people in their own country, which is not what the National Guard, by the way, was created to do ever. That is supposed to be our militia. That is not created to be sent overseas to fight foreign banker wars in other places. That is not what that is for. And everybody knows it, except for the people who are running things in the most corrupt ways possible. So this is insanity. Do you see the difference here? Something is not at all adding up here in any way. Like I said, there are literally people still in floods right now that cannot get out. Um, There are people that the people that did survive, they are in shock. They are traumatized. They watch their family members. They watch their neighbors die. We need help desperately. And people are very angry. So you're just going to give billions what's just given to Ukraine, but he can't help us here in North Carolina? I'm proud to announce a new $2.4 billion package of security assistance. Are there any more resources the federal government could be giving them? No, we've given them, we have pre-planned a significant amount of it, even though they didn't ask for it yet. Because it seems like this government has resources for everywhere else on Earth right now, except for its own people. We have Mayorkas now coming out saying FEMA doesn't have enough funds for the rest of the hurricane season now. Quote, we are meeting the immediate needs with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. And then right on cue, because I guess they're letting her pretend to be the president now, Kamala Harris comes out yesterday and says, people affected by this will get a $750 check. Uh, And the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met. Meanwhile, I guess the people in the Hania are like, where's my 50 bucks? I mean, this is 2024 money. It's insulting. It's insane. What got me fired up about this was yesterday, me and my team did the rescue of that 11-day-year-old baby. All these government officials and social media, they're showing that video, that pictures and video of that rescue and claiming that like, they have some like government helped with that. Even USA, I think it was USA Today wrote an article about it saying it was a Florida National Guard 
that went and got it, like with a helicopter. No, it was me, my buddy Charlie, and a civilian named Zeb with his own personal helicopter out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Like without that civilian, that baby would be dead. And the old lady we went and rescued after that, she'd be dead too because she had one day left of oxygen. Let's recap. Not to read between this lady's lines or anything, but it's not like she's bailing what she's saying all that hard. She's straight saying they can't go in because they haven't been given the clearance to do so and everything in the military requires orders first before you can just do anything. You can't just act of your own accord. Trying to level with you. We're only doing what we're allowed to do and what we're told to do. We cannot do anything other than that. They're not going to let us go on foot. They're not going to. I don't know why. They're just... uh, Listen. And then she's letting everyone know very specifically how many days it takes for somebody to die without water. It's been a couple of days. People were without food and without water. I think you can only go two days without water. And that is if you were healthy. Not if you're a child. Not if you're an old lady or old person. Keep that in account. Add that together. This is very simple math she's laying out here. Add that together with how many days after this thing happened that it took for our president to finally sign off on an order to send a thousand troops to activate a thousand troops and like whatever, 6,500 guard. So you're telling me that for Hurricane Katrina, they had Coast Guard preposition, they had 82nd Airborne out there, which is trained to deploy anywhere in the world within 18 hours to make it anywhere on Earth in less than a day it's right there in the state because it comes from the base in the state not letting them deploy military helicopters sitting all around on the ground not letting them go up in the air for five days that's what we're saying right now to an area geographically that has well over a million people in it and these counties have been decimated. Some of them are still underwater. There's mudslides still happening. People are trapped. Roads are gone. Bridges are gone. And you're telling me, I mean, do this math. Just do it. Everyone do the math right now. You can't really arrive at any other conclusion, can you? It's horrible. This is horrifying. It really is. It's really horrifying. We know it's public. We know all the money that was just sent to Ukraine. Are you kidding me? How much money is it going to take to rebuild these mountains? And there's, there, there's, no, there's no amount of money that you can put on these people's lives. Like, what is going no. on? I don't understand. This is not incompetence, okay? Incompetence suggests that somebody's just too stupid. I do not believe at this point, after everything that I have seen, researching for this and watching hours of video of people talking about what's going on and I I do not believe that it is physically or mentally possible for any anyone to be this incompetent. This is not incompetence. This is something else. I posted something earlier today on X because I was trying to put together a list of of resources that will actually if you donate and you want to help people out in the affected areas the these resources will actually get to people on the ground because there's a lot of fishy bullshit that's going on i did post this and i asked people if if you've got a source that's actually a good source that's helping people right now where the donation will make a difference Please post that basically because I want to give people, you know, good, legitimate sources where if they give them the money, it's not just some BS that's going to go to like fees and, and, you know, salaries of people and things like that and not actually just go help people on the actual ground. And so these are the ones that people overwhelmingly said were helping people and were good. And the first one that everyone that that was mentioned by multiple people is Samaritan's Purse, which is a Christian organization out of Boone, North Carolina. And they've been sending out trucks filled with supplies, disaster relief. They've gone to Florida. They've gone to Georgia. They're obviously helping in North Carolina too. And so they have a donation thing set up on their website where people can give money. There's also a place where people can sign up to volunteer. The second group that was mentioned consistently is the United Cajun Navy. They were mentioned multiple times. This group is flying in there. They're doing search and rescue. They're also transporting oxygen and insulin. They're bringing starlings to hospitals. 
um, all kinds of stuff that they're doing. And so they have a page set up here where you can donate for that. There's also Grindstone Ministries, which was mentioned multiple times. There's a page set up for them to donate. There's also the Y'all Squad mentioned multiple times. What is going on, guys? Caleb Beecham here, Operations Director for the Y'all Squad. I'm currently back in central Iowa after delivering our first of possibly many loads down to eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina. Um, on that truck, we had shovels, rakes, chainsaws, brooms, mops, toiletries, really anything you think we could need right after a disaster, we brought it. There's also the 118th. They've got people on the ground. They're in multiple states. They're doing stuff. They have a give, send, go that they've set up. Operation Airdrop, which is volunteer pilots that are flying things into places where the roads have been washed out. And then finally, Mountain Mule Packer Ranch was also mentioned. They've got mules and they're loading equipment onto mules and walking it in that way. Because, again, like I said, can't get in there with the roads the way they are. I mean, there, there's like in some areas, there's only one road and it's iffy. And so they're, they're trying to get supplies in there any way they can. So those are the, those are the main resources that people mentioned if you want to donate to try to help out. All right. So I'm cutting in here. I'm going to go ahead and put this up as part one. And this is going to be to be continued because we have a whole other side of what's going on that you guys need to see. But I need to go ahead and get what I have up now so this information can get out. I'm actually kind of getting swamped over here. We're both getting kind of swamped over here with stuff. So I just want to go ahead and put up what I have so far. And then Aaron's been in the background researching a whole other aspect and angle to this that I think is very important for everyone to consider. Also, there's a lot of conspiracies going around that I don't, I think should be taken with a grain of salt until receipts can be shown because there's some people making some pretty tall claims without a whole lot of evidence and people are just taking it at face value and I'm I'm really not sure that's helpful right now when you consider the levels of pain and heartbreak and devastation that are on this ground we do not need to be making stuff up it's already bad enough as it is so we have truestreammedia.com up if people want to contact us to send you know, pictures, video, information, whatever you, you need. We've got uh, our contact information's up there. My DMs are open on X. And I will put that whole list of links below. And this is to be continued. I love you guys. Stay safe out there. Hug your loved ones because you just, you really, you never know. You just never know. Mm -hmm.